intrapopliteal PTA and stenting for critical limb ischemia. Lecture presented during the Asia Pacific Congress of Interventional Radiology 2004. PTA has evolved as a vital component in the treatment of peripheral vascular disease. Early experience with angioplasty of the intrapopliteal vessels met with limited success. However, today with better balloons and wires we have results which are far better than what we could offer a few years ago. So the balloon technology changed from the 5 French balloons to the 3 French low profile balloons. They were coated with glide coating or hydrophilic coating. They would go over 018 wires. They could be used at very high pressures and they are semi compliant balloons and not just non compliant as before. The wire technology improved. We started getting better quality 014 and 018 wires. The mantle became nitinol allowing us to torque the wire better. The tips could be reshaped and we had wires that now had a 1 is to 1 torque and also they all came with glide coating allowing them to be navigated better. So what are the indications of Belloni angioplasty? They are more limited than those in the larger vessel because the long term patency is lower. Thus the indication today is for ischemic pain, rest pain, if you have a gangrene, a non healing ulcer or very severe claudication that prevents even minimal ambulation. Mild to moderate claudication is not an indication and treatment at other levels usually relieves symptoms. So we open up SFA, we may relieve the symptom and we leave it at that. Risk of occlusion is unacceptably high for the treatment of mild to moderate claudication. Let's quickly look at the SIL categories that are available for lesions in the tibial vessel. A single focal stenosis, one centimeter or less of the tibial vessels or peroneal vessels is, is uh, category one and lesion that wouldn't require any form of intervention. And uh, but remember also these lesions invariably do well with angioplasty. Category 2 are multiple stenosis, 1 cm or less, 1 or more stenosis, 1 cm or less of the tibial trifurcation, tibial or peroneal stenosis dilated in combination with a femoropopliteal bypass. 25 to 30 percent of these patients will fall into the group of which 70 to 80 percent will benefit. Category 3 is a lesion where the length of the stenosis is longer, 1 to 4 centimeters, or a short occlusion of 1 to 2 centimeters, or extensive stenosis of the tibial trifurcation. And again, we will find about 25 to 30 percent of these patients will finally come to us for revascularization, and about 60 to 70 percent of them will actually benefit with the procedure. Category 4 are tibial or peroneal occlusion longer than 2 centimeters diffusely diseased tibial or peroneal vessels. Now 50% of our practice will fall into this group and about 50 to 60% of these will also benefit to some extent after percutaneous revascularization. So clinical success is defined as resolution of or significant improvement of ischemic ulcerations after completion of treatment or any accompanying proximal percutaneous or surgical therapy. So we understand that here it is not so much about how long the vessel stays open, it's more about whether the symptoms are relieved or the ulcer has healed. So when you want to take a patient for one of these procedures, it's important that we look into the clinical symptoms, the angiographic findings and also do a detailed examination 
to ensure there is no other cause for the pain. We would also like to do an ankle brachial index because it actually tells us whether there is ischemia or not and whether the pain is ischemic or not. We have to do the routine exam, especially one needs to do the creatinine because many of these patients have uh, diabetes and renal dysfunction. So we should do an angiogram which extends all the way from the bifurcation right up to the ankle. And it's important to also talk to a surgeon because we would ensure that whatever we do in the end, we should not make it impossible for a surgeon to treat. And uh, pre-procedural management, ensure that things uh, like diabetes and hypertension are controlled, his cardiac function is evaluated. If he's a smoker, ensure he has stopped smoking. This lipidemia should be controlled and he should be on antiplatelet therapy. Proper antibiotic cover is necessary for infection and excellent wound care is necessary even after the, the, the best form of revascularization that we can offer.